what is going on and welcome back to What Shall We Do Next. I'm Mike, your host, and I hope you guys are having the best day ever. Before I get started, guys, if you are new here, please subscribe if you haven't already done that. We're on the road to 73,000 subscribers and I would love you to join me on this journey. So hit subscribe right now. What are you doing, little fly? Go and find your old friends. <laughs> Hit subscribe and join the fam. And also, guys, go follow me on all my social media. Links are in the description. I have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even Snapchat. So go follow me on all of those. And also, I've recently created a Facebook account for you guys to add me on. An actual account so you guys can be my Facebook friends. Link is in the description. And finally, be sure to hit that little notification bell right next to the subscribe button. That way, you will get notified each time I upload a video. Thank you. And once again, I am coming back at you guys with another creepy video. And today, we are talking about another scary story. A true scary story. And this scary story is called The Demon of Detroit. So, the story of the Demon of Detroit is a scary, true story about the Cole Adams house, which is located in Detroit, Michigan. This house was said to be haunted by a horrible thing of unspeakable terror. But enough of the jibber jabber, let's get right over to the story. The Demon of Detroit. It all started in the early 1960s when Mr. and Mrs. Adams moved into the house in Detroit, Michigan. They had five small children and a pet dog. Almost as soon as they moved in, the family seemed to sense that there was something wrong with the back bedroom. All of the children avoided it, and even the dog refused to go inside. It was a tiny room with just enough space for a bed and a built-in closet in the corner. Mr. Adams worked the night shift at the Cadillac assembly plant. So when he came home in the morning, he would sleep in the back bedroom. It was far away enough from the rest of the house that he thought no one would disturb him. However, sleeping in the bedroom always gave him a strange and uneasy feeling. Almost immediately, he began to experience horrible nightmares. They were so vivid and real that he would wake up screaming and shaking with fear. In one of the ghastly nightmares, he dreamed that he opened the closet door and the blood-soaked and mutilated body of a woman fell out. As the days went by, the dreams became worse and worse. He lost so much sleep and he was so exhausted that he ended up moving back into the master bedroom with his wife. The nightmare suddenly stopped. When his mother came to visit the family, they let her sleep in the back bedroom. The next morning, she said she didn't sleep a wink. Her face was pale and her whole body was shaking. She claimed she had heard terrible sounds in the room that went on all night long as if someone was trying to break in. She refused to sleep in the bedroom again and decided to cut her stay short and go home. After that, Mr. and Mrs. Adams began to realize that something dark and loathsome was lurking in the back bedroom. Then, an old friend of the family came to town and they gave him the room for the night. They didn't mention a thing to him about their unpleasant experiences in the room. Shortly after midnight, the man was lying in bed when he was awakened by the feeling of someone turning him over. He opened his eyes and saw someone standing outside the bedroom door. It was a woman with long hair, but she had her back to him. She was wearing a short fur coat and a blue dress. He got up and started walking towards her. But all of a sudden, every light in the house went off. He was stumbling around in the darkness, and when the lights came back on, he found himself in the kitchen. Mrs. Adams was there, washing her hair in the kitchen sink. 
All of a sudden, they heard a terrible, unearthly wailing sound that left both of them speechless with fright, and a sickening smell filled the room. Then, the heavy trap door in the kitchen floor that led to the dirt basement started opening and slamming back down. Terrified, they called the police. Within minutes, a few officers were searching the house from top to bottom, but they didn't find anything. The next morning, when Mr. Adams got home from the plant, his wife and friend were waiting for him. As calmly as they could, they told him what they had experienced during the night. He didn't believe them. That evening, he decided to sleep in the back bedroom. He was just about to drift off when he heard someone moving in the room. He thought it was his wife, but when he called her name, there was no answer. He turned over to look and saw a hideous face just inches away from him. It was the most horrible thing he had ever seen. The eyes stared past him and the mouth moved to talk. But all that came out was a hissing sound and a terrible stench. Mr. Adams came running out of the back bedroom, his eyes wide, screaming with terror. He was ripping handfuls of his hair from his head as he ran. His friend tried to grab him and hold him down, but Mr. Adams went berserk, kicking and fighting. Finally, his wife and his friend managed to throw a blanket over him and wrestle him to the floor. The house was filled with the same putrid stench they had smelt the night before. An hour later, he had calmed down enough to tell his family about the ghastly and indescribable face that he had seen. The husband and wife grabbed their sleeping children from their beds and fled into the night. The next morning, they all moved in with Mrs. Adams' parents in a different part of Detroit. The Adams family had to admit defeat and they left the house and back bedroom to the horrific entity that was lurking in it. The Demon of Detroit. So are you guys still awake or do I have to give you a little jump scare? I'm gonna give you guys a jump scare on three, two, one. Just kidding, I'm not really gonna do that to you guys. I got you good. Anyway, that is a pretty scary story, wouldn't you say? Kinda reminds me of the one that happened in Indiana with the, the whole, you know, the crawling to the ceiling. Demons in the houses scare me. But anyway, my question to all of you guys for question of the day is, would you stay in the back bedroom overnight? Like if you could go to this house, would you stay in the back bedroom overnight alone for $500,000. Let me know in the comment section. That is question of the day. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. Let's see if we can go for 10 billion likes on this video. Why not? I would really appreciate it. But as always, guys, remember the most important thing. Chase your dreams. Be happy. Live your life. Don't let anybody bring you down. Peace out.